if you're not going to deal with the whole Bible. This is what he's telling you here. He said, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. He didn't say it did away with the spirit of prophecy. He didn't say it's something brand new aside from the spirit of prophecy. He said it is, didn't he? Yes, he did. So they one and the same. But now let's go, Father, let's go to Matthew 24. Because we're going to give you a good example. Because you got too many people believe this lie that you don't need the Old Testament. So therefore, they don't want to o- obey the laws and statutes in the Old Testament. They think the New Testament somehow did away with that. And that couldn't be farther th- from the truth. You need it all. Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with it. I come to fulfill. Then they turn that around and say, well, he fulfilled it. We don't need to do nothing. No, he turned around and said in Matthew 5, if you break one of the least commandments, he says, it's all good to heaven and earth pass. And if you break one of the least commandments, you're going to be in trouble. <clears throat> but now, Matthew 24, we're going to give you an example on how the Old Testament is still good all the way to the end because here the apostles going to ask Jesus a question about the end of the world. And concerning the end of the world, He's going to give them a message about Daniel that you can get some information from Daniel. So why would he refer them to Daniel about the end of the world if you don't need the Old Testament no more? Mm -hmm. Matthew 24 and verse 3. Matthew 24 and 3. Go ahead. And as he sat upon Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So now, just like I just said, they asked him when he was preaching to them about everything being destroyed over there. And he said, well, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? Because he got to make a second coming. And that's written all over the Old Testament. So how can it be done away with? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Okay, so he gave them signs. We're not going to get into all the particular signs, wars and rumors of wars, uh, famines, pestilence, earthquake. First, he told them, beware that you don't nobody deceive you, which that then went past us like a, a, a boat of lightning. Because many people are deceived. But he gave them signs, but we're going to read one important sign. Verse 15, read that one. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, uh-huh. stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Now, he gave him one important sign at verse 15 about the abomination of desolation that was spoken of by Daniel the prophet. So now how is he going to tell you that Daniel spoke about this event happening at the end of the world, and you're going to let some minister tell you the Old Testament done away, you don't need it. They even print Bibles with the New Testament only. Mm-hmm. That's a great sin. You are throwing away ha- more than half of the ingredients that you need to get salvation. Because the majority of things are spelled out. Everything, matter of fact, is spelled out in the Old Testament. The New Testament just reiterated and confirmed it, testified of it. So he said, when you see the, the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, when you see it standing in the holy place, we know this is a man moving to a holy temple that they're going to build in Jerusalem. That's what all this fighting is going on. It's going to bring us to that point. They're going to build a temple. The Antichrist is going to move to the holy place. And he's an abominable man to God. And God going to deal with him after he wreak havoc on the world for three and a half years, though. But we're not really trying to deal with that. I'm trying to point out to you that Jesus referred you concerning the end of the world to Daniel the prophet. He said Daniel spoke about it. And he said it's so important, this event that Daniel spoke about, that whoso readeth, let him understand. So now if you can't go back and read Daniel, if they didn't blind at your mind to the Old Testament, you won't understand this. But let's go back and read Daniel. Since, since Ma- the master himself referred us to it. Daniel 12. Let's make sure... <clears throat> He spoke about the abomination of desolation. (coughs) Daniel 12. Daniel 12 and verse 8. Go ahead. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? See, now Daniel saw a lot of visions, even down to the end of the world. Daniel took you to judgment day. 
if you read Daniel 7 chapter, again, we don't have time to read it all, but he saw all these visions down to the end of the world, and you're going to do away with it. So he wanted to know, but it wasn't for him. It's for our benefit, and you won't go back and read it. That's a shame. Go ahead. And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. See, it wasn't for Daniel to understand, but it's for us to understand, and you won't read it. He wanted to know, but they told him, the Lord told him, go your way, it's sealed to the time of the end. At the end, you can find out, but you don't want to know. That's why you're blind. Go ahead. Many shall be purified and made white uh -huh. and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. Now, he said in the end, many going to be purified and made white. That means they're going to find out about this thing. That's what we doing. That's what we trying to help you do because you need to know. It ain't enough to say I believe in the Lord and go, don't know nothing and going about your business. You need to get some knowledge of this word, brothers and sisters. So those that get their act together, the Lord going to give them some understanding of his word. But what if you don't want to serve the Lord? What if you don't want to go by the whole scroll, all the word? You ain't going to know nothing. What did he say about the other? Finish that 10th verse. But the wise shall understand. Uh, he said, but the wise. He said, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So if you don't understand some of the things that's about to happen in this world concerning the abomination of desolation that Jesus himself told you about, that means you're missing some ingredients, brothers and sisters. The wise shall understand. Verse 11. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that make it desolate set up. How long shall it be? There shall be 1,290 days. See, that's about three and a half years. He mentioned the daily sacrifice too, but he told you about the abomination that make it desolate set up. So Daniel did speak about it. So now you can't do away with the Old Testament when Jesus took you back to Daniel about the end of the world. Let's go to Second Peter. I'm sorry, Luke 24. Luke 24. So now, don't let nobody tell you the Old Testament done away with or has been fulfilled when Jesus told you, check out Daniel about the end of the world. Luke 24. And if you let somebody continue to tell you that, I'm going to tell you what you are. You foolish. You say, well, you shouldn't call nobody. Well, I'm going to let Jesus tell you what you are. If you let somebody tell you, you can just take the New Testament. And you do away with the Old Testament. That's a foolish mindset. And I'm going to show you Jesus called you that. Luke 24 and verse 25. He called some of his servants that. Go ahead. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Now, notice what happened here. We don't have time to read all of it again. <clears throat> but this is after he had resurrected. He walked up on two of his followers who was losing faith. They wasn't understanding the scriptures that he had to die and resurrect again. They said, well, we ain't seen him yet. The women said he arose. He's sitting there talking to these guys. They don't even know it's Jesus after he had resurrected. But they losing faith in what they need to believe, which is the scriptures. That's what you need to believe, not what somebody say. So finally, Jesus got fed up and show you how important it is that you take all of the Bible, Old Testament include. He said, oh, fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have said. So I ask you, do you believe all that the prophets have said? Do you still try to live by it? And have faith in it. If you don't, this go for you too. That's right. Go ahead, verse 26. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? See, say, shouldn't this should have happened? Why? Because the prophets told you about it. See, Jesus didn't come on his own. He came according to the Old Testament. So he was validating the Old Testament, and it's still valid, and it will be valid until the end of time. It's good. Go ahead. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. See, he took them back. He said, look, y'all need to understand this. And he started that. So now Jesus is preaching out the Old Testament, and you're going to do away with it. Something wrong with that preacher that's doing that. And something wrong with you if you're listening to him. He took, back, took them back to Moses, and he preaching himself to him. Moses and all the prophets. And there's many things, there's more things yet to be fulfilled than he fulfilled at his first coming. But let's go to 2 Peter. 